This week, our heroes talk about starting a dog sledding team, find out who was on the Jumbotron at a hockey game, and is Dan leaving us? All this and more on this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. Baby Corn is the devil. Yuck. Welcome to this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. We are good for your ears. I'm Dan, and as always, you can find me at RFS Dan. And I'm Jess, and you can find me at Gone to the Snow Dogs and Snow Dogs Vlogs. As always, did you see? I try to throw you off again. It's been a while since you've uh, tripped me up on my intro, so uh, it's true. That true. itself not... is tripping me up. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait, did you even realize? Yeah, I, I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> Just, I'm sitting here. It's already 73 degrees out. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. I'm hot. I have the fan on. So if the fan's in the background, I'm sorry. I live. <laughs> I live in the heat. I live. I live under a magnifying glass. Uh, you kind of do, don't you? Yeah, it has been bad the last couple of years with our drought and our heat waves and stuff like that. And, and and it's been hotter than I remember it being. Either that or I'm just getting old. And I'm like, hey, you you young people, you're built in air conditionings. <laughs> uh, it's a, a balmy 36 degrees here today. <laughs> What's balmy mean? I have no idea. But it was 44 <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Holy cow. Is there <laughs> snow on the ground? Uh, yes. So there is still snow on the ground. Yesterday and the day before, it was melting like crazy. So we, uh, I told Jamie, I'm like, we got to get a few more sled runs in. We got to take the dogs out. Like, cause I don't know. I feel like last year, well, last year Shelby had paw surgery and that put us out for like two months. We couldn't run. Yeah. You didn't run so, much last year. No, not at all. So I feel like, I don't know, this year I feel like I owe it to Memphis. And I mean, I kind of owe it to Kira too. I just, I feel like I need to take them out. Like Memphis missed out on a lot of running last year. So it's like every time it's nice, I, it's so weird. And I'm sure everybody gets this where you get an idea in your head and then you can't do anything until you do what's in your head. Yes, I, I get that with music and songs and it'll play in my head. And I'm like, you know what? Yes. I need to play this because I am not going to be able to get her out of my head until I play the song. So right. I totally get that. I do that when I wake up in the morning and I'll be working and it'll be nice out. And I'm like, I need to go outside. I should be outside. Something needs to be happening outside. And then the only thing I can think about is that I'm wasting time inside when I should be outside. And when it's winter, I'm like, I should be running the dogs. I should be running the dogs. <laughs> so <laughs> we ran the dogs the past two days in a row, actually. We're not running them today. Um, but we did run them the past two days in a row and it was yesterday was a little a little iffy because it was a little warm out and I you know I don't have a fat bike so I don't run them in the winter time on my bike mm-hmm. I use the sled and it was a little iffy because it was uh everything was melting everything is melting and it was like <laughs> <laughs> it was I knew that the trail we were going on was going to have some spots where either I was going to get wet or the dogs were going to get muddy and sure enough we we went down one of the snowmobile trails and this time when we go down the snowmobile trail jamie parks at one end gets us all set up we take off and then he races to meet us at the other end right so that's pretty much what we did and i told him i'm like keep your phone on you because if something happens i'll I'll call you you just drive up this trail so we make it we go and we go around a curve and we go down a hill and the dogs are booking i think my thing tracked them their top speed on that one was like 16 miles an hour so wow, they're that's like good they're booking and we come around a hill and we come down and a, down and it gets real straight and i can see it up ahead and i'm like great i'm gonna get soaked there's a spot in the trail where it's really low and all the snow is melted and it's just water and i'm like oh well thankfully memphis is so smart memphis didn't run right kira would have ran right through the water she wanted to run through the water memphis like ran way over up to the edge and before we actually got to it i got off the sled you know i held on to it but i got off of it so i could walk well run i guess because they were moving <laughs> even though i slowed them down we were still moving so we kind of like ran around this one side and i didn't manage to get real wet right there but then when we came around the next corner there was a spot where the sun had hit the trail and it was like all mud for a good probably 30 or 40 feet (laughs) so i had to like kind of pick up the sled and move it and the dogs of course still wanted to run so i was splashing through mud puddles and by the time we got done i was soaked and uh muddy (laughs) but it was fun it was fun they did really good (laughs) that sounds like a lot of fun actually i would totally go through the mud that sounds so cool how do you prefer the bike over the sled when it's a trail like that a bike would be i mean i'd still be 
wet and muddy because the tires are going to throw stuff everywhere. But when it's a trail like that, I think I would like a bike better. Uh, and not just because of the mud, but the snow, because it was 44 degrees, was very sloppy. It was a sloppy trail. So, like, their feet would kind of sink down a little bit. And it was like that wet. So it would sink and it was wet. So... I think a bike would be a little bit easier because I could help them even more than I do with the sled. Right. But, but I don't, you know, I don't know. Maybe I, one day I, I'll get a bike. I worry about you on a bike. They're not, it's, I worry about you sliding out more yeah. so than on a sled. And I can say this because I ran a bike shop for four years. I that do worry true. about you, your front tire washing out. It doesn't matter how wide your tire is. It doesn't matter how many studs you have sticking out of it. Like, there's still inertia oh, yeah. and they're still sliding out and wiping out and i don't know i i, I think i would be cons- i will i will be concerned when you get a bike i think the difference is like my sled you've been on you you haven't been on the sled i have now but you were on my big wooden sled my sprint sled mm-hmm. and i don't know if you remember but it has flex yes so like when you go around the corner anybody that's never been on a dog sled before when you go around a corner the sled will flex and it will bend and it will you can kind of lean into a corner and the the handle will flex and so you kind of have a little bit more freedom with that when you're coming around a corner fast not that you can't still tip over a sled been there done that Um, (laughs) i also know many people who i have i've seen other people do the same thing so you know the flexing is a good thing but your dogs do still need to know how to take it easy on curves sharp curves um but yeah, so like the the sled has a lot of flex and a bike is very rigid. A bike doesn't have as much flex. So like you're saying, when the dogs are tied to the front of the bike and you go to make a sharp turn, the bike may be turning, the dogs are still pulling on the front of it. So it's very easy to wipe out on a bike. Yes. Most of the time when I bike with my dogs, I use the Springer bike attachment. So my dogs are off to the side. Okay, you have the I, off to the side one. Okay. That's usually what I do. Now, I have done bike joring where I've had them out in front of me. And like you said, it's scary. It's, I would rather be on the sled. I feel like, I feel safer. I feel like I'm more in control and not in like a cocky way. I'm not being like, I'm more in control by using this thing over this thing. That's not what I'm saying. Well, no, you have a wide frame. You have a wide uh, frame and you can maneuver back and forth a little bit easier even like when the dogs were pooping i'm like oh try to pick up the one sled so you don't run it over <laughs> right, like so right. you have a l- little bit more more control i've seen videos recently our buddies do it with with their bikes and it's done correctly it's not a problem it just just right. between the two a little bit more sure-footed when you have something like a wider frame almost like having training wheels on on your bike yes and like anything it takes experience like you know uh, you riding a bike riding a bike for one definitely wear a helmet always i do have i have a winter helmet for when i have done biking when it's cold um i do have a winter helmet just so you know and i would wear it um i i feel like if you're biking with your dog 100 percent wear a helmet if you're dog sledding you should probably wear a helmet as well but i don't when i only have two do, dogs do but you know what? the fights that i would get into with people at the bike shop i would get into so many fights over helmets in the helmet rooms that's where all my arguments ended up to the point where it's like dude if you don't want to wear a helmet you know what fine enjoy enjoy head soup you know you saw right? humpty dumpty right he didn't wear a helmet look where that got him where is yeah. he now where is he now he's an omelet Right? And nobody ever crashes. Rad. You never will get hit by a car, I fly 50 feet, you hit your head on the ground. The helmet saved my life. That is not what is going to happen to you. You know what you're going to do? You're going to open your garage door. You're going to go out on your sidewalk right there. You're going to be riding your bike at two or three miles an hour, and you're going to slip off of it and fall and hit your head, and it slides out. We've, we had a guy that do that. What about me? I was going about one to two miles an hour when my front tire washed out. I, I was done with the jumps. And my front tire washed out. Just I was going zero miles an hour, and it turned <laughs> sideways, flipped me off the bike, jammed me in the stomach, popped my intestine out. Like it's Ugh. not. It's it always happens on stupid stuff. It always happens when you're just waiting for your buddy who's changing the flat, and you're just doing laps right there at zero miles an hour. You turn your wheel too sharp, off you go. You hit your head. Like right. so, you wear a helmet. And after working at the bike shop and seeing all the craziness, man, we should be wearing helmets when we just walk around in public. <laughs> I would this would this would make people mad. I've had people get mad at this. Well, you wore your seatbelt when you like showed up in your car, right? And they're like, well, yeah. Well, then why wouldn't you wear like a helmet when you're on a bike? And then yeah, and it was always 
it was always the same people. It was always people over the age of like 45 to like 60. Like the people that are like, well, when I grew up, yeah, right. I know you grew up in the 50s where nobody ever got hurt because I guess nobody ever got hurt in the 50s. So yeah, so I would get a lot of that. So that's, I'm, I'm off of my TED Talk soapbox. Please wear <laughs> no, a helmet. Like, I get it because I'm really bad at not putting my helmet on when I ride in the summertime on my bike. Even when I'm with the dogs, I don't wear a helmet. Like, sometimes I do, but most of the time I don't. But for some reason, I have this mindset when I'm with them in the winter and it's muddy and it's, you know, like there's slush on the trail and stuff like that. I wear my helmet and I don't know, like, why my mindset is like that. But I will say after talking to you for so many years, it is something that I do more now because I think about it more because of the stories you've told me. Like, that's just... So, you know, sometimes those TED Talks are needed. Yeah, we have a wall at that bike shop. We had a wall of crashed helmets because you could trade your helmet in for another one if you crashed it and stuff like that. And it's just like that. It's just like anything. Like, I don't know how many how much crime's happening in my town because I'm not a police officer. But if a police officer is sitting right here, they would tell me about all kinds of stuff. And the same with the bike shop. You don't know anybody who hit their head, really. But I see only people that hit their head and it's never anything good. They never have a good story. Nothing. So I have this friend who's riding her bike by the trails. In order to get to the trails, you have to go up this really steep road and it's half paved like they were building houses and it went out of business somebody came and removed the manhole covers and i know you know where this is going and she was <laughs> hauling butt down to the car and hit the empty manhole you can't it's early in the morning oh. everybody rides early in the morning and flew over her face was so ripped up she didn't even have time to put her hands out and it's like it's dumb little things like that that get you in trouble that particular time i don't know if the helmet was going to save her because she pretty much landed on her face But it's never anything good, so please wear a helmet. Yeah. Jamie had a helmet on the one time he went mountain biking. Um, Well, he went a couple times, but the the one time he wrecked when we lived in Arizona, he had a helmet on. He uh, had borrowed a a friend of ours' bike, Mm -hmm. and they went mountain biking down this, I forget what they called it, the 50-year trail or something. Springfield Gorge. (laughs) Yeah, it's this really crazy trail, and you drive up to the top of it, and then you ride down to the bottom of it, and it's it's a mountain. So usually, you know, you go up to one end, and then somebody picks you up at the other end and takes you back to your car. Yes. And same thing. They were now he was flying down the mountain and uh, just came to a spot where he couldn't turn fast enough and was either going too fast or the tires slipped but either way he flew over the handlebars and this was Arizona and they were out in the desert so he flew over the handlebars and had enough time to put his hands out and then realized that that's going to hurt like hell and put his hands into little balls so when he landed instead of grabbing the cactus he knuckled the cactus <laughs> oh fist bumps he, what isn't he fist bumping isn't it it's yeah. trees it's trees on sleds uh, or it's right? cactus die yeah and he had biking gloves on Mm -hmm. so all the needles from the cactus went through his gloves into his hand so he couldn't even get his gloves off oh no he's got like spiked gloves now (laughs) yeah Yeah. and this was like back in the day before cell phones and before everybody had a camera so i have no pictures of it but it happened (laughs) oh yeah these helmets are expensive my helmet was two hundred dollars I believe uh, 220. It. it was like 220 for one of the helmets and it was two for another. And um, yeah, it's you can pay a lot of money for helmets, but it it uh it saves your life. And a more an ex- a more expensive helmet does not mean a safer helmet. A more expensive helmet means a lighter helmet, which means more has to go into it to have the same amount of safety right. that a regular fifty dollar helmet would have. And please, right. please don't buy your helmet at, at a department store either. That That's not good. That's the same thing. Like when we went to buy Jamie, his snow, snow machine helmet, you know, like. You can't just put on a motorcycle helmet to ride a snow machine because ah, the vents yes. are wrong and you know it's it's not right you know your your mask is going to is going to uh, fog up and things like that and like JB has a motorcycle helmet and when he had a motorcycle he had a full face helmet like we weren't he doesn't wear one of them little beanie things on top of his head like when he had his motorcycle there was that big discussion of yeah legally you can just wear a little tiny helmet but he had a full face shield helmet and everything i had one too when he had his motorcycle so when we went to when we were looking at helmets for the snow machine it was the same thing like right we're not gonna buy a hundred dollar helmet we're gonna we're gonna go in and we're gonna do our research and we're gonna find you know the right brand and the right everything because if you fall or 
It's not even if, it's when. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it is exactly when. And I'm a good I'm a good case of that. I fell like really, really bad. But here's the thing. Here's And I know we've been talking about helmets for a long time. Here's the thing <laughs> that would also be super frustrating too. People would come in and they would have a bicycle and they would want to wear their motorcycle full face helmet on a bicycle. And I'm like, you can't do that. It's for a motorcycle. And I'm like, well, here's how it works. And I've been through helmet training. I've been to a factory and watched them make and test helmets. Like when you crash, that helmet is made to come apart. That helmet is made to dissipate the impact. When I, if I put a bicycle helmet on and I'm riding at 10 miles an hour and I fall, it will come apart. If I put that bicycle helmet on me and ride a motorcycle, it's going to blow into bits at 30 miles an hour. So it's designed to come apart at a lower speed. The opposite for a motorcycle helmet. If I put a motorcycle helmet on a crash at 50 miles an hour on a motorcycle, it's going to do its job. If I put a motorcycle helmet on me and I go 15 miles an hour on a bicycle and crash... I'm going to get hurt because you're not going fast enough to have it do its job. It's going to still just stay in one piece and not disintegrate. And your whole head is going to take that vibe is going to take the impact and the vibration of you hitting the ground. So there's it's very going to break your neck. It, yeah. They're heavier too, but people don't yeah. understand that they're designed to come apart and break apart under certain speeds and certain pressures and stuff that are not rated for, you know, you're not riding your bike a hundred right. miles an hour. So the moral of the story is wear your helmet. The moral of the story is keep on track of the podcast, Dan. Like, how did, how did I take off? The, <laughs> how did that take off the safety helmet talk? But maybe, you know what? Because if- we were talking about me being on a bike in the woods and not wearing a helmet. I mean, hey, this is stuff people need to know. It, it might is. not be. It, 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 and we told some stories. People, you know, people tell us in the comments. Did you like our ramblings or not? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know what? Here, let me say something. One last thing I promise is the last thing about helmets for this episode only. I can't promise the next episode. It won't be the helmet episode. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I had a lady come in and she was in tears and she came up to me and gave me a hug and said thank you for convincing my son to wear a helmet because he crashed really hard and when they scooped him up off the ground he was fine but when they like scooped right. him up off the ground they're like dude that helmet saved your life the validity of whether it did or not I don't know but she was just stoked that I gave the kid like because they don't want to listen to their parents but they'll listen to the fun dude with the mohawk like dude like come on right. I have to wear a helmet too like you know so she did come and thank me only came in just to thank me for making sure her son did get a helmet that's cool yes so listen to Dan, everybody. Go buy a helmet. <laughs> yes, listen, listen to me. <laughs> so while you were sledding, you've been telling me about this Doggo Run app. What's that all about? Oh, yeah. So I found this new app. Thank you, Steve from Loki the Siberian for making me look for one. <laughs> um, on Android, that lets you like track your dog's activities. Like not, not like a Fitbit. They don't have a tracker on them. It tracks it on your phone. So I feel like you go out walking your dogs or you run with your dogs or ski, whatever activity you're doing, you can put in your activity and it will keep track of it. So I can put in, and you can put in more than one dogs per activity. So I was able to, when we went the other day, I put in both dogs and I started, unfortunately I started it a little bit after I actually started running because I forgot. Um, but it tracks, it shows me like how far we ran, like the first run we did the other day, we did just over a mile and the dog's maximum speed was 18 miles an hour. Wow, that's and, pretty good, especially pulling. Yeah, and their average speed was 7.2 miles per hour. So their like average little trotting speed they were at was about 7.2 miles an hour. See, and I know it would be way faster if they weren't like pulling you. So that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. So it kind of lets me keep track of it. And then if I would have realized I could do this and started doing it like at the beginning, I would know at the end of the season how many miles each dog had run total for the season so i'm gonna try to remember like when i bike this year and things like that to keep track of it to see how many miles the dogs can put on them hopefully by next year kira will be almost old enough by winter next year to actually do a full three mile run Mm -hmm. so that's what i'm gonna try to get them to be able to do is a good three mile run and then i don't know maybe we will enter a sled dog race because the the shortest race for the group we belong to is three miles Oh, see, it's three miles sounds like a lot, but you should definitely do that. That would be so rad. Yeah, I think it would be really neat. And I think uh, I think Memphis will still be at the age, you know, she'll only be seven next year, you know. So Memphis will still be young enough to where I think she could do it, you know, and she could still run that far. So depending on how that's how that's going, we might we might end up entering a race. The only thing is, is my dogs have never had to do like passing and things like that. So 
I don't exactly know how that will work, but because it's an amateur sled dog group, we'll be able to like work on those things. No, they they move. Train with those they things. move. You just go, just go. Yeah, right. Let right. everybody get out of your way. That'd be so right. I want to come watch it. I want to run right. along the sides like the people in the Tour de France, where like I dress right. up like the Pope or I dress up like a <laughs> like a, like a clown and stuff, and I run next to you holding up a flag and stuff and getting all crazy. <laughs> that would be so rad. If you do that, I have to figure out a way to come out there. It would be it would be pretty neat. I, I like I said, it's something I've always wanted to do and I've never done. And it, it usually had to do with like the ages of the dogs just weren't right. Like when I had Memphis, Shelby, and Oakley, I couldn't run all three of them. So it was like, how do I take all three of them to the event? And then one can't can't go. And it just never ended up being the right timing. But I think, especially with how good Kira's been doing, I think this might actually be the right time. That would be so funny. Yeah, you just didn't have the right horsepower. Like you just didn't have the right. right makeup to do to see that would be so cool do they have fun events there too like will they like could i get strapped to one and then i pull you and we can see like how far that goes do they have fun like that they've had at their year end stuff they've had little games and things like that like they've had sleeping bag runs and like wheelbarrow races and they've had people where you have to like get down on your hands and knees and actually pull a sled yes. with somebody on it oh, yeah that's what we should do we should be the cc pal sled team <laughs> Oh, that would be so fun. Come on, tell me that wouldn't be great. A big old mohawk. We could put some color in it. We can paint it up like a NASCAR. Oh, my God. Put sponsors all over me. It would be kind of interesting. You'd have to watch Talladega Nights and get all these Ricky Bobby quotes. <laughs> Rubbin's racing. Oh, my God. That would be shake so and bake, cool. baby. Shake, that's what it was. Shake and bake. You ever, you ever eat shake and bake? No. You've never had shake and bake? Not that I know of. You know what it is, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, I know what it is. It comes in a box, and you shake it and bake it. <laughs> it's Shake and Bake, and I helped. <laughs> yeah, see, you know the commercial. I haven't had Shake yeah. and Bake in years. Maybe I should revisit it. Let me know at home if you guys are currently or have eaten Shake and Bake in the last six months. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's got to still be out there, right? Oh, yeah, it's still out there. I've seen it at, at Meyer. Wow. I wonder if rice aroni is out there, too. Rice oh, yeah, rice aroni is out there. Man, I love rice aroni. It's so bad for you, and it's got so much sodium in it. But I love to take... Uh, either the teriyaki flavor or the chicken flavored rice aroni and add a bunch of like you buy the frozen the frozen uh what is it called like i don't know they're like the frozen asian vegetable thing yes. i think that's actually what it's called yep. and it's got the chickpeas. Uh, you take that yeah and you throw that in to your rice aroni as you cook your rice aroni and you cook it with a little bit extra water and you throw all those vegetables in there and it's i don't know why it used to be my favorite thing but i used to make that all the time it was like look rice and vegetables rice and vegetables <laughs> I, you could put it in your instant pot i swear you swear by that instant pot you treat it like a magician's magic hat you're like it's always just amazing. putting a bunch of stuff in there and pulling it out what did you make in there the other day you put like lasagna in there or something I did. like that i'm like holy cow ronco like why? i've never made lasagna no that's a lie i think i I've made lasagna once in the 20 plus years that Jamie and I have been together. He loves lasagna and I hate it because I hate making it. And I think I've made it once. And the one time I made it, it turned out like every other time I've ever seen anybody make it. It was except for Crystal. Crystal made amazing lasagna. Um, but a lot of times when I see it made by other people, it's always really runny. And I don't like that. I, I think that's what I don't like about it. I don't like that it's like runny and watery and I feel like it should be thick. Uh, so yes. even when I made it in the instant pot, I'm like, this is just going to, it's not going to turn out right. My fear was that when we took it out of that pan, it was just going to smush and fall apart. And it didn't. Oh, it stayed right. together. And it was amazing. And it like stood on its own. And it was like, this is, a and it was delicious. So I mean, I have to say that as well, but. I love it. And I, I couldn't have done that in a pan. I needed the Instant Pot for that. No, and it only took me like pot. 40 minutes. <laughs> it took the Instant Pot 40 minutes. You just threw it all in there and you're like, poof, yeah. flat spaghetti. I know what you mean, though. It reminds me of the microwave meatloaf. <laughs> yes. like, it just come as, it comes out all slop. But I think my point was you could throw all that rice aroni and stuff in there and maybe yeah. it'll like uh, cook up really well. I mean, I guess so. I you put everything else in that Dane thing. I don't think you could shake and bake in an instant pot because you need that you need that oven crunch for that. Right, right. I want one of those. Although air Ninja fryers. Ninja Food Maker now has, I believe, they have an instant pot that's also an air fryer, so it's literally everything in one. That's Get cool. Your own little, it, yeah, that, I thought that was kind of cool too. I'm like, I had an air fryer. Um, I got one. I used it. I liked it, but I have a convection oven, so it's the same thing. And that's kind of where I was at with it. My oven has a fan in it, and it cooks things like when, when I set them at a certain temperature, just like an Instant Pot 
or not Instapot, an air fryer. An air fryer is basically a convection oven. Oh. It's a little container, and it heats up like an oven, and it's got a fan, so it's constantly circulating that air. The c- circulation of the air also keeps things a little bit drier than you would normally bake in an oven. So, like, you throw frozen french fries in an oven, sometimes they still turn out a little bit soggy because yes. there's no air moving in there. Now, with a convection oven, you got a fan, and it circulates the air. So that also keeps things a little bit drier. Plus, it cooks it more evenly and makes things crunchier. So okay. I have a convection oven. I don't really need an air fryer. But we had one, and I really liked it, except I had no place to put it, so I gave it to my mom and dad. My mom uses it all the time. She loves it. I need one of those but, convection things. Mine just does normal oven stuff, like old yeah. school. Yeah. When I bought the oven, the new oven for this house, that was the biggest thing I wanted. I didn't care about anything else. I wanted a convection oven because it makes dog treats crispier. <laughs> I love the crispy. That's that's my favorite thing. We when I was a yeah. kid, we had just a regular deep fryer. You know the one where you put like a whole gallon of Crisco in there. Yes. You fry some, you'd fry some uh, French fries, and it was good. But it like left a lot of greasy oil behind. And it's like, what am I supposed to do with this? Because like now I don't want like another greasy item. Like I've eaten all the greasy items. And what am I supposed right. to do with it? So I do I do think those air fryer things look cool. I use the heck out of that sandwich machine. You guys know what I'm talking about at home. The one where you put two pieces of bread in there and you can yes. fill it with whatever, and it pinches the sides and. Yep. Yeah, I use. That I heck have a, that. I have a real deep fryer. Like I have a deep fryer, like you were saying, where you put the whole gallon of stuff in it. But mine has a filter system, so when you're done, you let the you let the oil cool, and then you flip a little switch, and it opens it, and it drains it into an airtight container. Oh, that's and cool. then you can take the whole thing apart. The whole thing washes in the dishwasher. The entire thing. You wash the whole thing in a dishwasher, put it back together, and then the oil stays good for the next time. And then when the oil turns a little bit brown, you just change it. So we don't have to, like, constantly throw the oil out. We don't eat a lot of deep fried food, but, like, when we make uh, buffalo chicken, I like it so much better when it's deep fried than when it's in the when it's in the oven. Or if we're making, like, what are they called? Crab like those crab rangoons or whatever the heck they're called. Like mm-hmm. I'm like making those in a deep fryer over an oven. So every once in a while, we probably use it maybe once every week. We probably oh pull wow it out okay and that's use way it. often. I thought you were gonna say like once once a year. No, and it's just because it's easy. Like if we want French fries, we can just throw French fries in it or onion rings. You just throw onion rings in it. So if we're eating like burgers or if we're having like fish sandwiches or something and we want fries, I just pull that thing out, pour the pour the oil in it, throw the fries in it, and cook it. We must be hungry. You know what it is? I am hungry. It's it's ten thirty five in the morning on Tuesday. I no, it's pretty... not. It's one thirty five. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you're from the future. <laughs> and yeah, it's so I have not had any. And I, I have more food talk. By the way, we're not done yet. I need to go back to when you talked about the Asian melody that you get, where it's uh, got the chickpeas, it's got the little mini corn. It has. Yes. So we get that when we make a stir fry. Do you tell me that you please tell me you? No, no wait. I don't want to bait you on this. What are your opinions on that small corn in there? I love baby corn. Oh my gosh, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You know what's really good? Pickled baby corn. See, I'm okay with that. It. I feel like <laughs> if I hate something and I'm, it's pickled, then I'm good. I wasn't a fan of bologna after my mom made me bologna sandwiches every day for school. And right. I just had a brown paper bag. So when I would get to lunch, like I would pull it out and it would kind of melt a little bit. And it'd be in the same shape as the corner of the bag. Like the cheese would melt. You know, those crummy craft cheese things. Right. So I'm like scarred from bologna. But pickled bologna is amazing. Um, I didn't know if I liked asparagus or not. Pickled asparagus, amazing. So I would totally... Well, I don't know about that pickled watermelon that you keep showing me. Right? I haven't tried it yet. It's too expensive. <laughs> I know. I oh can't gosh. do it. I'm like, oh my I gosh. can't spend that much money. But those little baby corn things, like, they just taste like you dirt. Don't, you don't like them? Okay. Oh, see, you must, you must buy the wrong brand of stuff. I do, I will say, I like the ones out of a can better than the frozen ones. Oh, see, But I've I also take them one. out of the can. I take them out of the can and I rinse them. Because oh. anytime I get vegetables out of a can, I tend to rinse them. Oh, so yeah, I would, uh. I take them out of the can and bury them in my backyard and grow a real piece of corn. <laughs> That's what it is. Throw it back in. It's like getting a little fish out of the lake. Like put it back in there. Let it grow up to real corn. Jamie doesn't like baby corn either, so it's great. Whenever uh, we have anything with baby corn, I get all the baby corn. My boy, but I also give him a fist bump for me after this. <laughs> I give him all of the green peppers, and I get all the baby corn. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I just, I don't. I don't want to, I don't want them. <laughs> and I love everything. The only things I don't like is the texture of cottage cheese for some weird reason. I just don't, I don't, it, it feels like rotten in my mouth. I don't right. like green beans in a can. That is disgusting. And I don't <laughs> like those little mini corn. I think everything else in the whole world is fair game to me. <laughs> I am not picky at all, but those three things are the things that stick out in my head that like, I don't, 
want to consume. You're like, nope, I'm not eating that. And here's the thing. I will. I will. I'm not a thing where, like, I'll ever, like, spit food out or anything. If I even if something, so I've had some funky sushi. I've had sea urchin. I've had all kinds of stuff. I won't right. ever spit it out. I'll, I'll power it down and, like, I just don't want any more. No, thank you. Right. Yeah, so... I don't know. I no, guess we. I guess we're gonna have to uh, not see eye to eye on baby corn. I don't know. I Maybe it, we'll, we'll have to let the audience vote. I hope it doesn't drive a wedge corn. between us. A, a wedge. <laughs> when, when they do our um, when they do our e biography, they're all like, and then things turn from the to turn to the worst, and it goes to commercial. When it comes back, they just talk about the baby corn saga and how that splits split up the CC Mouse podcast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Oh, we really must. We really must be hungry. You know what's really funny, though, now that we're on the topic of corn, because, I mean, I guess that's just where this podcast went. I don't like store-bought corn at all. Like, I, and it's probably because I'm spoiled. Um, I There's a couple Hold farms here that I buy it from, and that's, like, that's my favorite way to eat it. And usually in the summertime, that's the only way I'll get corn is from the farmers. And then once oh. it's gone... We don't usually like I'll eat canned corn, but I'm talking like corn on the cob corn. Right. I only like to get from the farmers and I I don't I it's just not good any other way. Like I like I said, I think I've been spoiled because we have sweet corn here and it's amazing. And then you buy stuff in the grocery store and it's just bad. That's interesting. See, I hear and corn's inexpensive here, depending on the time of the year. Like in the wintertime, it's like maybe it's like two or three for a dollar. But at some right. point here, it's 10 for a buck. And they yeah. look good. I mean, I guess I could get fresh corn. I don't know. Every corner has somebody selling fruits and vegetables on it. But I don't right. see corn there in, in my head. I can get amazing pallets of strawberry. You know, because obviously I'm Southern California and, and, and there's a, a heavy Mexican culture here. Right. Which is where I came from. So we get all that good stuff. Everybody's on the corner. If you guys drink those mango cart beers and you see that like little logo of the um, the, the colored umbrella and the lady right. with all the fruit and stuff here, I will pass by 10 of those today on the way to go vote later. Like it's true. It's true. And guess what? It is amazing and delicious. I never thought about corn i i, sh- I should try right. and see if i can have a corn off oh and the best way to make it like a lot of people like just boil corn but i'm yes. the best way to make it is over either on the grill if you can't have a campfire or over a campfire so you have to like soak it for eh, 15 to 30 minutes with the husk on soak it in the water and then don't wrap it in aluminum foil a lot of people will wrap it in aluminum foil you don't have to do that just put the whole thing right on your grill and cook it till it's done Shuck it all, or on right? top like, of your... like, like not, or do you have it all naked? Where it's nope, just corn? have it all, have it all still inside of its, yes. inside of its little corn home. <laughs> <laughs> it's corn home. I do have this little thing that it's like a flat rack, and it's got three little like indentations in it, and you can put the corn right. in there, and that's for putting it on the grill and flipping it yep. over and stuff like that. I've never tried it though. Like I should try that. Oh, it's so good. That is the best way to eat it. I love it over the campfire the best because you get that little bit of campfire smoke flavor, and. uh we, we've made it quite a few times while camping. We ate a lot of corn. Charles from uh, uh, Thor Unleashed, the one time we made corn, we ate so much corn. And he kept saying that. He's like, I've never had corn this good. I'm like, that's because we're, one, we're camping and everything tastes better when you're camping. I'm like, two, this came from Shemansky's farm. Like these people have been growing corn for hundreds of years. <laughs> Shemansky Farms. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You can't make that, that name up. Uh, Holy yep. cow. Do you remember the corn thing going around with the drill for a while on the internet? Yes. Oh yes. man. And it took out teeth and hair. Yep. Yep. I sure do. Yeah. Wait, is that how that lady took out the front of her hair? Was it from the no, corn? No, that was because, was it, no, I think she was just playing with a drill. Oh, and, it, and and she just wrapped it around and it just like ripped yeah. it out to her scalp? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, but I remember the lady, her front teeth ripped out. Yeah. she was, oh, yep. everybody at home is uh, uh, shut in tea, like, oh. <laughs> Do you remember the, the poor girl that tried to curl her, her uh, sideburn and it yes. burnt off? <laughs> and that yep. look on her face of horror? Yep. Oh, it's like no. watching the girls on TikTok that cut their own bangs by pulling some yes. hair down and then cutting their scissors. And yes. then it's like, what are you doing? Yes. Here's another pro tip. Do not pull your bangs down as hard as you can and cut a straight line and let them go. Yeah, this <laughs> Do you know work. how a rubber band works? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Have you uh, ever cut your own hair? No. No, Jamie cut my hair once. How'd that go? But, 
good. He just, it, it, we, his sister was a hairdresser. So we pretty much knew, or he pretty much knew what he was doing. Uh, so you don't have any childhood Bane stories of like them just uh-uh. being all catty corner. I know you guys out home do. I know there's family members, my nieces, they, they cut each other's hair. And I remember when they were like five, six or so going over there to visit. And I'm like five years older. So I'm already like old enough to know and i'd look at christina and it's just jagged 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 i'm like holy cow that's so crazy i never did that i never got into anything i was never one of those people that like you know how the kids like go put on their parents makeup or get into the stuff like right. i never thought to do that i think one time though i did get caught eating i remember being five years old when i lived in garden grove and I was eating chapstick. It was cherry. Oh, it was cherry chapstick. <laughs> and I was eating cherry chapstick. I remember. I remember that. Oh my gosh! You didn't do anything hilarious. funky like that. Not that I know of. I'm sure my mom and dad probably have stories, but not that I know of. Oh, I just had a breakthrough because now I guess my favorite Halloween candy is like the wax lips or the Neko things where it's like (laughs) with all the wax and maybe that's where it came from. Maybe it came from my love of cherry chapstick. Oh my God. Yeah, it probably did. Wow. Now, wow. Do you like those wax things? No. Yeah, for no. some reason, it's satisfying. I don't know as an adult what I would like, if I would still like it, but I was a kid, like, I wanted everybody's wax everything. Some of them had liquid in them, and some yep. of them were just, like, the vampire teeth. Oh, God, they made those little bottles that you'd bite the top off. Yes, of. yes. Yep. Oh, yeah, Yundan loved those. I don't even know if I would like those anymore. I think it might taste too synthetic for me. Do you remember the paper candies where they, they had, like, the little dots of sugar, and you had to, like, try to pull the candies off the paper? They were all different colors. Oh, yes. I haven't you seen You had to, like, try to pull the candies off the paper without getting the paper. No matter what, you always got the paper, and you had to eat it. Oh, my gosh, yes. I don't, I don't even know if those are still around. They have to be. That's, like, the right. lowest form of candy, right? Like, right. that's, like, the lowest form. I'm sure they're still around. I don't know where you'd get it from. We used to get it at, um, like, the cider mill. Anytime we'd go to, like, fun places like that, they'd always have, like, a little candy area. Right, where they're making, like, taffy and stuff like that. Yep. Yep. I don't mind the taffy. It's okay. What I didn't like is I don't like any of those crystal salt rocky things that are, like, on the sticks that, like, look like a piece of, like, Oh, yeah, rock candy. Yeah, rock candy. It never tasted like anything to me. It's just because it's sugar. That's all it is. And they're colored, but they weren't really flavored. The, yeah, you have to put a lot of flavor in them to make them taste like anything. It's just sugar, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Do you think anybody's ever gone to the bottom, or not, not of a Tootsie Pop, but like uh, when you go to Disneyland, do you think anybody's ever eaten like one of those whole suckers? Oh gosh, I don't, probably. I'm sure somebody has. Hmm, yeah, that's, I, I remember getting one one time, and I think I ate like 10% of it, and then I'm like, I hate you. Same with the bunnies. Like, <laughs> Same with the, I still think I have last, I still think I have a bunny in the fridge from like 10 years ago. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy cow, we've just been talking all kinds of food stuff and all kinds of mm. dog stuff, and I have Dude. a list of all kinds of stuff that we have like to get to that we haven't even talked about. Like, I went to a hockey game. Ah! You did! I did. I went to go see my Pittsburgh Penguins play the LA Kings, and let me tell you people, I obviously am not from Pittsburgh. I have no connection to Pittsburgh at all, but I have loved the hockey team since I was a kid. The LA Kings are the LA Kings. Out here in California, you're a Fairweather fan. Like, nobody really has loyalty like you would have, like, like in Boston or, or somewhere back east where, you know, people that are from New York love that they're from New York. People in California, eh, they're Fairweather fans. So the LA Kings are doing so horrible that these tickets were so, like, crazy cheap and all over the place. And, like, you could just pretty much almost, you could almost, like, take some recyclables back and get a Keens ticket right now like nobody cares so I get to the arena and it's full of Pittsburgh fans it made up majority of the arena when Pittsburgh scored like cheering was out of control (laughs) it was out of control so I get down to LA a couple hours away from here and you were freaking out when I was showing you how many miles I had to go to get there holy cow it was like 1.9 miles 26 minutes that's so insane (laughs) so I creeped there at one point it at one point, it, you would have gotten if you would have gotten out of the car on the five freeway, you could have made it to the Staples Center before I could have parked. That's so crazy. I know it's so crazy, huh? But you know the price you pay to live in a big city. So I get yeah. there, I put yellow in my hair. Yes, I put yellow in my hair. I took two cans, but I sprayed. Have you even, have you even uploaded any of those photos? Oh no, nobody's seen. Nobody even knows Ugh. that I went. But like, but like you and just the just the group, just the group chat knows I went. So I did not. Right. 
upload anything. So I do have some videos and stuff that were there. And, and so you get there and if you can get there like an hour before it starts, you can go all the way to the glass during warmups. Even if your seat's up in the rafters, you can go all the way to the glass for warmups. And a little pro tip, if you're going to go see hockey, get seats that are like back a little bit further. Don't get front row seats. You will not like looking through the glass. If you can look straight down the arena from behind, that's fine. But if you're on the side at all, it's going to look like a fish tank and you're not going to have a good time at all. Right. At all. That's my pro tip. That's so many pro <laughs> tips today, Dan. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm like a regular Tony Robbins. Is that who that guy is? We don't I talk about it. him anymore, right? Are we, are we Gary V's? Oh, man, I'm like a Gary V with a lot less, <laughs> yeah, with a lot less F-bombs and finger pointings. Right. So I get there and I run up to the glass. Well, I'm trying to run up to the glass because there's a lot of Pittsburgh fans there during warm-ups. And that's where you get the pucks. That's where you see on Sports Center when the kid's like, I'm at my first game and he's got that sign and somebody throws a little puck over and stuff. And I'm like, I am for sure getting a puck. Look at my hair. I'm going to go up there to the glass and I'm going to like put my face up against it. And I'm going to be like, oh, Billy, like the cable guy. And everybody's <laughs> going to laugh and it's going to be the greatest and stuff like that. But it was too crowded there. There were so many yeah. people down there that I couldn't get close. But I did get on the Jumbotron during warm-ups. I did get on the Jumbotron that's and I have cool. never had more people cheer for me in my life that's so cool and every and i know that like i knew i would every time i go to a hockey game with my hair up then right. i will get on the jumbotron there's been times where i didn't want to so i put a hat on but so it was right. cool i had yellow hair i had my penguin stuff on and people were applauding and high fired and asking for pictures with me and it was fun you know i was being dan and and making everybody laugh and it was it was really really good and then the game starts I run around to the other side of the arena and get to my seats and my seat was perfect. It was a back row seat. So nobody had to see over my head. Right. And the concession stand lady, or like not the concession stand, like the usher lady. Is that? Yeah. Yep. So she has this, she has this really cool stop sign. So like when the game's in play, like you can't go down to your seats and stuff. And she was standing there next to me the whole time. And she didn't know anything about hockey. She was, uh, she worked for the arena. She worked for the Staples Center. So like, for instance, I believe the night before was like Kobe Bryant's like, like a memorial thing was going on there and the Lakers play yep. there and the Clippers play there. And, you know, sometimes there'll be a Laker game at noon and a, and a hockey game that night and they take apart the arena and, and stuff it's like so that. Crazy. And so I explained to her all about hockey and she loved it. She's like, why, why is the goalie running so early? I'm like, let me fill you in. She knew like 10% about hockey. So it right. was nice to be able to like share that with her. And I took some videos and I had some fun and I cheered and people were high fiving and it was just, it was a great time. It didn't matter if you were a Keens or a Penguins fan, everybody seemed to be enjoying themselves. And I, and, and that Staples Center is huge. They were just there for a good time. They were there for a good time. Yeah. Yeah. All the, all the people that were really, that were fair weather fans have quit by now, obviously right. by the ticket prices <laughs> being so dang low. Like they were like under 20 bucks for a lot of the stuff there. And there's not really that many bad seats up there. Although I have been to the very last row of the Staples Center once for a Lakers game. And um, it, it, it does feel a little sway up there. Like That's little, so great. Yeah. Have you ever been up high in, in an arena? No. Have you no, been? not like that. No? Oh, yeah. I don't recommend going too far. It does get really it does get really steep. The only... We used to go to Joe Louis Arena for the Junior Red Wings games. I never went to a Red Wings game at the Joe Louis Arena, but <laughs> we used to go to the Junior Red Wings games because um, our school would get us tickets. So, like, every, every so often, the entire school, our whole class would go down there, and we'd watch Junior Red Wings games, and that was at Joe Louis, but we didn't sit up high. That's pretty cool. I've been out there on the ice before. Like, you can get packages. I think I've said it before. You can get packages where you show up a few hours early. They let you skate on the ice for an hour and play a game on right. hockey, and then they kick you out of there, and then you come back in for the, the game later that night. And It's did, really neat. Do you see? Did you see the video of the little girl at the Red Wings game that had the sign that said, um, if you, I don't remember exactly what the sign said, but it was something like, give me a puck for a box of Thin Mints. Yes. And one of, yeah, did you see that? Yes, I saw that. And they were doing Tic Tacs. The one guy was choosing what Tic Tac he wanted. And they were throwing Tic Tacs over for pucks. Yeah. So it's yep. gimmicky things like that that get you a puck. And um, I'm, I'm part of a Pittsburgh Penguins group. And there was a, my one of the guys that I met up with there. I, I say friend now. Um, he was from straight up Sweden. He was so, so cool. from Sweden. And I was determined that we were going to get up in front. And I was going to try to get a puck for him. Like, like, right. like, let's get a souvenir. But yeah, now these kids got it a lock. They're Tic Tac dancing. They're protecting. They're parents yep. are standing behind them wall-to-wall signs for warm-ups so there wasn't getting any close i'm like that's fine let them have like that's their moment like right I, that's i get it but i would like i would have liked to try to got that get that guy a puck just because he came all that way yeah Ooh, and then i met another set of people before we went into the arena 
and they took the tour. They they came all the way from the other side of the country, and they're hitting everywhere. And they hit L.A., then they were hitting Anaheim, then they were going back and hitting the Vegas arena, and they were going to all the games. And I came. I have really bad Stockholm syndrome, and I was so close to being like, "Can I just go? Can I just go?" <laughs> I follow them on Instagram, and they were everywhere. Where were they at? They were at. Um, they were at. Oh my gosh. Uh, I almost called it Jellystone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Yogi Bear. Um, they were at uh, Yellowstone. Like, and they're just going yeah. around everywhere and hitting up all the games and stuff. And I thought that was so cool that they that were taking really advantage. Cool. Yeah, they look kind of young, and they were just tra- trying to travel to every arena so you meet some cool people there you meet some cool people there i did make it meet a handful of people that i do follow on instagram now and they follow me and they know about the game show and all the stuff that i do and so That's you meet so some cool. people there yeah and it's people that you know i never see penguin stuff i i see keens and duck stuff all the time but i don't see my people and i'm like it's my people ah so right. i had such a great time with everybody it was so fun i went by myself i don't need kind a man. of you were there with all the other fans i was there with all the other fans right right yeah, so it was a lot of fun. It's so easy for me to make friends there. So like, right. you know, it's it was great. That's all I got to say. It was a great time. I recommend going to a hockey game. You know, even if you're not a hockey fan, you will love the energy that comes off it. The freshness, the chilly of the ice, the chillness of the ice. Yes. Yes. The fact that everybody's smashing and crashing and it's, it's, it gets aggressive. It, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun time. Uh, well, I'm glad you went. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you had fun. I got to hear about it all in real time though. That's right, huh? And I was losing yep. my voice because I was yelling and screaming. Yep. It was pretty funny. Yeah. It was pretty funny. The videos we were getting and everything you were saying. And then as the night went on, it was like, oh, Dan's losing his voice. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, like, well, we could tell you, you, you didn't have a good time if you don't lose your voice. That's true. And I do, I'll have to go through my phone. I forgot. I have pictures and videos and stuff and I didn't, just didn't post anything. I got home so late that night that yeah. I just went on to my next day and I was like, oh, those are kind of my memories. So I know there's um, right. a couple people tag me from the arena um, and pictures. So I do have some of me like zoomed out where it's not just a selfie of me standing there with my yellow hair. Right. Pe- people like the yellow hair, which takes a couple of cans. I got a pro- oh, one more. Pro- oh, man. Another pro tip. If you go to Party City and get that little mini can of like $3 hair color, like the hairspray stuff, you need two cans. Yeah. You need yeah. two cans, Sam, if you want the color to show up. I went next door to Sally's Beauty Salon and they had the really nice expensive stuff, but they didn't come in yellow. No. Oh. Right, right. So pro tip, you'll have to get two cans if you want that to show up. When I did Dantix, I tried to put glitter in my hair and it wasn't enough. <laughs> can- it was. Uh, <laughs> oh, trigger words. Yeah. Trigger no. words. Which, oh, by Bad the way, idea. Dantix uh, is on its way to monetization. So thank you, everybody. Yay! Yay! Thank you for everybody that's going to get me penny soon for Dantix. <laughs> Not bad. I've done five weeks in a row. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I know you're gonna miss this week, but you're going on vacation. Uh, I yes. guess it's not. Re- I guess it's vacation. You're going away. What would you call that? Uh, yeah. I, I'm my my family lives out in Las Vegas, and it's my right. sister's birthday out there, and she's a care she's a KJ a karaoke jockey. So she's got this uh, gig on Friday night at one of the bars that are there, and we're just gonna show up there for her birthday party. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, and I'll get to see my mom. And that's yeah. cool. I haven't seen my mom in like a year and she's old. She's like old. She's like 82 now, almost 82. So she's, she's old. So I, I really need to go see my mom. So yeah, I'll yeah. go out there. Uh, Vegas is like eh, close to four hours to get there. It'll be more close to six when I come back on Sunday. They're in right. drive time traffic. Oh my gosh. I've been stuck between here and Vegas and there's only one freeway and it's like pretty much almost just one lane each way, maybe two lanes each way. Right. But I've been stuck before because you have to use that freeway to come back from Havasu to come back from St. George is another popular place. Uh, right. that you that everybody passes through that 15 freeway so you get stuck I've been stuck where I've gotten out of my car and walked around and it's just the freeway is just closed yeah so on the way back it's gonna be a little bit crazy but yeah I'm excited to go out there so there won't be no Dantix this weekend there'll be Dantix next weekend but yep. I will go out there and I'm gonna I'll, I'll make a little video of me being out there and stuff I'll probably throw it on the Patreon I was thinking about that I was thinking about recording with my GoPro vertical have you ever made a vertical GoPro video no yeah I forget that that shoots in vertical so I want to know what that's like making a video where where you pretty much can almost see me from head to toe in a yeah. pretty small frame. So I think I was I was thinking about that last night. I was like, oh, I should like I should like record in vertical. So I'll record some stuff out there. I, yeah, I don't know how not? much stuff I can record in the bar because it's all copyrighted songs. How do you get away with that? How does she get away with that? My sister, how can she play all this music? Oh, probably because she has licensings for her uh, karaoke equipment. Hmm. I'm gonna have to ask her when she's out there. I know last time that I, it's been a lot of years since I've watched her do it. She had those books, you know, the the book that you go through with the pages right. and, and the CDs, and she bought you know, you buy like the CD set and stuff like that. She's been right. doing it for a lot of years. She's really popular. Her last name's the same as mine. It's Mosley, so it's Mos Betta, Mos Betta Karaoke. 
<laughs> and uh, they love her. And yeah, so that's where I'll be. I'll be I'll be in Vegas. I think I'm more by the stratosphere. I think her, their house is like by the stratosphere. So I'll be in that way. So if you guys have any suggestions in Vegas, right? Uh, let me know. I'll be there, I think Friday morning I'm going to leave and I'll be there through Sunday. I think you'll have fun. I'm glad you're going. Yeah, yeah. If you guys have, <laughs> hey, if you guys are listening from Vegas, I'll let you know the place that we're going to be at Friday night. You can come by and say hi. Right? Come visit. Come visit. I'll give you a channel card. <laughs> That'll do it for this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. You can listen to us every Wednesday on your favorite music app. Interact with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at CC Mouse Podcast. Check out our merch at ccmousepodcast.shop. And we'll see you guys next week. Same mouse time, same mouse podcast. Bye. Bye. We did a thing.